I wanted to spend some time talking about uh, some of the more technical pieces uh, that refer to the disease characterization. Myeloma can be very different uh, in different individuals that have the same diagnosis, uh, meaning that the biology of the disease can be different. Uh, so when you first came to me, uh, there was a lot of information I, I told you. Had you ever heard about things like staging or cytogenetics or fish markers? things along those lines. I had heard of staging in cancer, but the other, the other terms that you use, no, I never had. I picked that up when I looked at the information that was given to me by the LLS Society, and then I had a little bit more of an understanding, but before that I had never heard of them. So multiple myeloma is a very complicated disease in these days. Um, if uh, doctors were to apply current research assays to sequence the tumors, to understand for something called uh, somatic mutations, uh, it is possible to see that there could be hundreds of mutations in an individual patient. And uh, if we in the computer systems put all that information together, we can actually see that each and every person who has myeloma could have five or 10 different myelomas going on at the same time in the body. That's typically how, how the disease presents on a biological note. Mm -hmm. There are things that we are testing that we call fish and cytogenetic assays. Uh, these are not the most sophisticated tests. These are tests that are, ev they are evaluated and validated for clinical use in, at the current time. I think in a couple of years, those tests probably will go away and we will use more sequencing based assays, what I talked about uh, before. Uh, so with the fish and cytogenetic markers, we can look for certain uh, larger alterations in the tumor cells uh, genetics. And we can see if the patient carries certain markers or not. And we can use those to predict if the disease is going to be on a more higher risk or if it's gonna be a more standard risk. That being said, uh, with better and better therapies, uh, those things are changing. Uh, so to be very specific, in the past, when we found certain markers in people with myeloma with older therapies, if a person had certain markers, that could be a worse prognosis. But with more modern therapy, those markers may not make a difference because the therapies are so much better. So a lot of the former high risk has just gone away because the therapies are so much better. Uh, so I think the whole uh, uh, literature on high risk disease is actually undergoing major changes. But there are all sorts of markers still uh, that we are looking for. In your case, you did not have any of these markers and we have talked about this in clinic. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, there is this literature on staging and you had heard about that in cancer, you right. said. So really in sta staging in myeloma, I would say is quite outdated. Uh, it was actually initially proposed in the 70s. So that's a very long time ago, it's 50 years ago. Uh, there was this idea 50 years ago that a patient who had more cells versus fewer cells, that that was important. Uh, in other diseases, uh, if you have a primary disease, for example, the breast cancer, if you have uh, the disease spread to the lungs or elsewhere, that would be something that would refer to the stage being more advanced. And there are different staging systems for dis different diseases. For myeloma, which is a disease of the bone marrow, uh, it's kind of to be assumed that the disease is spread uh, throughout the marrow in each and every person. It's just a matter of how many cells there are. But with more uh, advanced or better drugs, uh, even if there are many cells, uh, those drugs can get rid of all those cells anyway. So staging is less important in myeloma. I think the most important thing for right now uh, is really the genetic signatures. And I think the sequencing technology will probably replace, I think, all the fish inside the genetics and for sure uh, all the staging. But still there is a literature saying that more advanced stages uh, that would be based on uh, albumin, beta-2 microglobulin, uh, lactate dehydrogenase and also the cytogenetics uh, that you can make up different numbers and uh, define a certain stage and uh, that could impact the prognosis. I think these things are changing and with better drugs everything is just looking better and better every day. In your case you had a standard risk uh, cytogenetics and fish markers and if we just plug in these numbers by stage that I alluded to, I think are probably less important, it would be the stage two number. It's almost stage one, but it was stage two if you just read the exact numbers. 
the idea is that with more advanced stages and with certain high-risk features that you didn't have, that the duration of the benefit of therapy would be shorter. So the progression-free survival would be shorter. So in a person where you have these features, you would have to restart some other therapy quicker. And you did not have any of those features.